is Corey Hyde, Hyde is spelled H-Y-D-E. Miss Hyde, where do you live? I live in Midland City, Midland. Are you currently employed? Yeah, I'm um, Avery Bancroft's personal assistant. And where do you work as his personal assistant? At the Blackbird Casino. What do you do as the personal assistant of Mr. Bancroft? I do just about everything. Um, from getting his expensive cologne that is so hard to find and it comes from just this French lady that does not like to talk to Americans, to um, doing other business things like scheduling meetings and even like recently I was working on um, a proposal for the Gambling Commission. Can you talk a little bit about this proposal? So this proposal is really important because if um, the proposal is good and is accepted and voted on by this um, the Gambling Commission's board, which is headed by Avery Bancroft, I mean um, Chase Covington, then Mr. Bancroft, my boss, will be the first person in the whole state of Midlands to own two casinos. Do you know the process of getting a casino license? So like I said before, you just craft um, a casino proposal. And I was on a board um, created by my boss to do this specifically. And um, you craft this proposal and you submit it to the Gambling Commission's board and they vote on it. And whether you get, um, based on what, what they vote on and who ends up winning, you can get um, the license and therefore the license will entitle you to create a new casino in the state of Midlands. Have you ever spoken with anyone on the process of getting a casino license? Yeah, I talked to um, somebody named Mickey Keenan. And who is Mickey Keenan at the time? Mickey Keenan, well, at first he told me he was an auditor from the Gambling Commission's board, but um, when I had a meeting with him, I found out that wasn't really true. What did you find out at this meeting? So at this meeting, we talked about the proposal. And because I was um, part of this board, I just wanted to make myself look good for my boss. And I just um, was talking to him about the proposal, getting some feedback, and seeing what he had to say. But then he told me that he was an undercover officer and was suspicious of behavior between um, my boss and Mr. Covington about the gambling commission and suspicious of their behavior throughout this process. Did Mickey Keenan ask you to do anything? Yeah, he just asked me to basically do my job and schedule some meetings um, between my boss and um, Mr. Covington. So did you schedule these meetings? Yes, and the first one, um, Mr. Covington wasn't there, and this was on March 31st. Who was in attendance at this meeting? So it was just me, um, my boss, and then Mickey Keenan. And what was discussed? We just discussed very similar things to the meeting that I had um, with Mickey Keenan on the sec uh, March 2nd. And Basically, we just went over the proposal, tried to get some feedback, just stuff to make ourselves look better. Have you ever spoken with anyone on the Gambling Commission's board? Yeah, um, in order to do what uh, Mr. Keenan asked me to do, I had to be in contact with Chase Covington in order to get him to go to the second meeting. So I called him, and when I called him, his response was kind of weird. What was his response? So I called him, and the first thing he said to me was, Ah, uh, Bancroft. I thought I'd be hearing from you again. Objection. Hearsay. Um, Chase Covington is the party opponent in today's case, and therefore it is not hearsay. What's his name? Uh, did, did Chase Covington come to this meeting? Yes, he ended up coming to the 13th meeting. And where was this meeting held? At the Blackbird Casino. And, and what time was this meeting? I would say around lunchtime, um, room service came in, so there was something to eat. And who else attended this meeting? So this time, like I said, Chase Covington was there. And then it was the same people as last time. So um, myself, Mickey Keenan, and then my boss, Avery Bancroft. And what was discussed at this meeting? Um, very similar things to the last casino, uh, I mean, the last thing we had about the casino. So we discussed basically the proposal. I mean, at least we did at first. What do you mean, at least we did at first? Um, so eventually, um, Chase Covington kind of changed the mood of the meeting and said something a little bit odd. What did Chase Covington say? Um, Chase Covington said that he, um, he said to my boss, what can you do for me? Stressing the word me. Did Chase Covington say anything else? Um, yeah, he said... I need a quarter of a million reasons for you to vote for my proposal. <coughs> Did your boss respond to this? Um, he said, well, that seems like a lot of reasons, but I'll see what I can do. What happened after this? 
Um, so basically we were just at the meeting, like I said, room service came in and they knocked on the door and then Chase Covington, in referring to his briefcase, said, and I'd like a new one of these if you catch my drift. Did Mr. Co or did Mr. Bancroft respond to that comment? Yeah, he just nodded his head. What did you do after the meeting? After the meeting, I ordered the briefcase because that's part of my job is to get things for Mr. Bancroft, like I said, about his club. And um, so, like, the briefcase came in a couple days later. Now, Ms. Hyde, let's transition to April 16th. Were you working this day? Yeah, I actually was. Uh, did you see your boss, Mr. Bancroft, this day? Yeah, um, kind of like in the afternoon time, um, a little bit after my lunch break, I went into his office and um, I saw him doing something really weird. What did you see Mr. Bancroft doing? Well, he had the briefcase that I had just ordered and he was stuffing it full of money. Did Mr. Bancroft say anything to you, Ms. Hyde? He said, there's no turning back now, let's go. Objection, hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, if I may proper, under 801 D2E, these two individuals individuals may be involved in a co-conspiracy, and according to case law, State versus Owens, we have until the end of trial today to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that these two individuals were involved in a co-conspiracy. Do you have a response? Your Honor, this is the first time that we're hearing of a co-conspiracy. And Your Honor, again, we have until the end of trial today to prove that these two individuals were involved in a co-conspiracy by a preponderance of the evidence, according to State v. Owens. I believe it might be on page 5, uh, depending on printing. You laid some foundation. Um, we'll get it. Uh, your Honor, your okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I I have no uh, further questions for my witness. Maybe move to strike. I one overruled. Overruled. Thank you. 